And welcome to this sermon recording for Sunday, March 12, 2023. Our passage this morning is uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, the 26th chapter, verses 40 through 43. And I invite you to listen to the word. Then Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you cannot stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was planning this Lenten sermon series, I did not realize that I had chosen this passage for the same morning that daylight saving time begins. And if I weren't in Arizona, I could actually have a lot of fun with this, right? Could you not stay awake one hour? Staying awake could be a bit of a challenge for us in one way or another, because even if we are physically awake, we can zone out. We're standing in the checkout line and don't realize the line has moved because our line is elsewhere, and so on. One area where this can happen even has a technical name for it, road psychosis. Now, road psychosis is different from road rage. Although some people experiencing road psychosis can lead others to experience road rage. But road psychosis works like this. You arrive at your destination and you have no memory of actually getting there. It's particularly common when we have a set routine. I mean, how many times have you meant to drive elsewhere and you suddenly find yourself on the road to the store or to Starbucks? or to the office, or, and so on, and so on. It's very easy for us to zone out. We do it when we are in our routine, when we're bored, or when we are tired. In today's passage from Matthew, the disciples are tired. These three verses were part of the larger story where Jesus has gone to Gethsemane to pray. This is on that night that he will be arrested. He tells the disciples to sit down while he goes a little bit further off to pray. But then, in a moment that's kind of reminiscent of the transfiguration, he decides to take Peter, James, and John with him. He doesn't do this because he wants them to learn or witness something, per se. He wants them with him because he is grieved, deeply grieved. Jesus is experiencing more than sadness. He is experiencing a sorrow that is so deep, it feels as if the very soul is alienated. He wants his friends with him during this time of great sorrow and grief. And they, and they go with him. But they are tired. All of the disciples are tired. It's been a wild couple of years traveling around the countryside, all over the place. They're also emotionally tired because it's been a wild couple of years of drama. Miracles of all sorts, emotionally charged debates with religious leaders, constant demands on their time and resources by that crowd that kept following them around. So it's no wonder that in the quiet of that olive tree grove, as they sit in the darkness and wait for Jesus, they begin to zone out. 
Even though they wanted to be there for him, they can't help it. Their minds begin to wander, and as they settle themselves more comfortably, they fall asleep. Jesus finds them asleep. He wakes them with that question. Could you not stay awake one hour? It's a question of exasperation and pain because of their lack of awareness. Awareness of what is going to happen. He's been telling them what's going to happen. They still don't get it. Awareness of what he himself is going through. As I said last week, the desert of compassion can occur when we think we know all the answers or that we know what is best for another. But it also includes a lack of awareness of what is going on around us. We too can zone out, fall asleep, and completely miss what is happening to those we know, to those we don't know, even to our world itself. You know, I love it when someone finally notices that something's different. At least, for the most part, I do. I am actually perverse enough to enjoy waiting to see how long it will take before a change is noticed. When did that move? Oh, about six months ago. But to be fair, I can be just as bad at not noticing as anyone else. We all zone out. We get so into our routines of life that, that we just plow along those well-trodden paths without a second thought or glance. And in any desert or wilderness, that is a very dangerous thing to do, including the desert of compassion. How can we show compassion for another when we are not aware that they are dealing with something? The truth is we cannot. Unless we are jolted awake by an elbow in the ribs, the discreet cough and line from behind us, or the sound of the car horn. And just like we need to keep practicing that asking that question, what do you want me to do for you and listening to the answer so we also need to practice awareness without awareness you will not see who to ask being aware of what people are going through can lead us to compassion so practice not zoning out there's some really simple ways to do this. If you go to a concert, don't just find your seat and immediately uh, stick your face into your phone or into the, into the program if you're not one that has programs. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Make eye contact. Speak to those sitting nearby. And if, someone, if you see someone that looks a little lost because they're alone, Invite them to sit next to you, if you can. When you go to the store, don't let your mind wander off by reading the sensational headlines on the magazine covers, or again, pulling out the phone and staring at it. Look around. See who else is there. Maybe even talk to them. And if they are struggling with something, ask if you can help them. And then listen to their answer. And even here, even here in this space, you can practice awareness, paying attention. Trust me, there is nothing so riveting in the, in the worship bulletin that you've got to be looking at it the whole time. Who's coming inside? What expression do they have on their face? Are they struggling to carry things inside or, or to find something? Who perhaps is crying through the prayers and the sermon? 
Be aware. And reach out to others. Not just those you've known for years, but even to that person you haven't even met. Compassion calls for us to stay awake. Yes, there is a thing called compassion fatigue, and yes, it is very real. And so there are times when you need to check out for a bit and rest yourself. Times when you need to be able to accept the offer of help when it is given to you. But that is different from zoning out so much in our lives that we can't even pay attention for an hour or half hour or 15 minutes. How many of you have zoned out during this sermon? Compassion happens when there is awareness. And awareness happens when we pay attention to those around us. It's easy to zone out. The wheels of life days, they just roll on and on. We move forward, onward. We're now at the point of Lent where its beginning is as far away from us as it's ending. And we might be beginning to zone out on it. Forgetting whatever discipline we chose for our Lent. Struggling to keep it going. Rest when you need to. Knowing the compassionate spirit of Christ can and will renew us. But also stay awake present, to the unspectacular present, which in itself holds so many opportunities for us to share compassion with others. Make the effort to see those who are around you, following the one who was always aware of others, even in his most excruciating moments. Stay away. Be aware. Don't zone out. Amen.